If you have knee pain and you've been diagnosed with a meniscus tear, do you have to have surgery or are there other alternatives? Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in New York. I specialize in arthroscopic surgery and sports medicine. On this channel, we discuss orthopedic injuries and we also explore the science behind exercise. Stick around to the end of the video where I reveal some of the non-surgical options that we can use to help manage pain from a meniscus tear. In the knee, we have two cushions that are made up of a spongy-like cartilage. One cushion is on the inside of the knee, what we call the medial side, and one is on the outside of the knee, what we call the lateral side. Very often, our meniscus can tear without any trauma. Now, as people age, their meniscus ages and wears over the years, just like maybe a tire might on a car that's had thousands of miles. So the meniscus can wear down and tear after use for many years. The meniscus tear is very often like a hangnail on the fingernail where there's a little flat tear and that fragment can irritate the joint and cause pain. Now there are other configurations of tears, but I'll save that for a different video. So you can imagine that if there's a torn piece of meniscus, if the piece is flipped out of position and is catching or locking in the knee, it's going to cause pain. Sometimes it may even cause the knee to buckle. So to return to the main question of this video is, do you have to have surgery if you've been diagnosed with a meniscus tear? The way I like to think about it, it's as if though you have a pebble stuck in your shoe. If it's a minor inconvenience, then we can leave it alone. It's not affecting your activities, don't worry about it. But if that pebble is causing a lot of pain, interfering with the ability to perform activities, then you may want to proceed and have a procedure called an arthroscopy to remove that fragment and enable you to get rid of the pain and return to your activities. The surgical procedure is called an arthroscopy, where we make two little holes in the front of the knee and I thread a fiber optic camera into the knee and we first look to find the meniscus tear. And then what we do is we trim the torn fragment back to a stable rim. So again, during this procedure, only the torn fragment is removed, the remainder of the meniscus is left intact. Many people ask me, is it the meniscus important? If it is, how can you remove it? And now that is a great question. The meniscus is critical. It acts as that cushion and helps the loads transfer across the joint. Now, if the meniscus is missing or torn, then the contact pressures between the thigh bone and the leg bone, called the femur and the tibia, those pressures go up. And as those pressures go up, it can cause the smooth cartilage that coats the end of the bones to wear down. And we call that arthritis. However, it's important to understand that once that meniscus is torn, that fragment no longer functions. The risk of developing arthritis automatically occurs once the meniscus is torn. Whether or not that fragment is left in the joint or taken out does not alter the risk of developing arthritis. The risk of developing arthritis is proportional to the size of the meniscus tear. So if it is a small tear, then the risk of developing arthritis is low and maybe it takes many years for that to occur. However, if the tear is large, then the risk of developing arthritis is much higher and maybe it occurs much sooner. As we stated before, most meniscus tears are from wear and tear, not from trauma. So when patients report knee pain, it's very common that when we find a meniscus tear, we also find that they have arthritis. This combined situation is a bit complicated because we don't know for sure, is the pain coming from the meniscus tear? Is it coming from the arthritis or some combination of the two? There was a very interesting study published in the New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago. And they looked at this very specific question, patients who present with a meniscus tear and arthritis, what should someone do? So what they did was randomize patients to either be treated with arthroscopy right away to address the meniscus tear or send those patients to physical therapy. For the patients that were randomized into the arthroscopic surgery, they found that 70% of those patients did very well. 
Presumably the other 30% didn't because for those people, the majority of pain was probably coming from the arthritis rather than the meniscus tear. For those patients that were randomized to physical therapy, they found that 30% of those patients within six months ended up needing to have the arthroscopy, although 70% didn't. And even if we send someone to have physical therapy first, based on this study, it looks like if they end up having the arthroscopy, many of them will do well. There are many factors that we need to consider when tailoring a specific treatment plan for each individual patient. Some of these factors are clinical, such as is there locking, catching, buckling, what kind of physical activities does this person do, how much pain are they in, do they have other medical problems. And then there's social factors. What kind of work does this person do? Are they traveling soon? Are they able to take time off to recover from surgery? So we have to consider all these factors when we tailor make a treatment plan for an individual. For some patients, if they have significant pain, locking, catching, buckling, we may need to just have them do arthroscopic surgery. But for many patients who have a degenerative meniscus tear, it is very reasonable to try a non-surgical approach to start with. And if that works out, great. And if not, then further down the road, switch them over to have the arthroscopy. So what are these non-surgical things that we can do for patients? Physical therapy. The idea here is by strengthening the muscles that support the joint and improve flexibility, and to also help reduce inflammation and pain, often can help patients get back to their activities. Another thing that sometimes can be done is a brace. And these braces are called unloader brace. And as the name indicates, the braces are designed to try to take some of the stress off of the side of the knee that has the meniscus tear, and people will use that brace when they're trying to be physically active. And then a third thing that people sometimes try is injections. And those injections might be a steroid injection, which can fight and reduce inflammation in the joint, and then there are these other kinds of injections called hyaluronic acid injections, which is like a lubricant that can help lubricate the joint to help with the arthritis. If after six to eight weeks of doing this non-surgical management, if the patient is not doing well, we can always then switch them over and do the arthroscopic procedure. And based on some of the published studies, many of those patients are going to do well. The key takeaway is that patients with meniscus tears, they have options. For some, a non-operative approach will be successful, will reduce their pain and let patients get back to their activities. For other patients who maybe have locking or catching or buckling of the knee, the arthroscopic approach may be the right approach. And for many of those patients, they will do very well and also return to their activity levels. You may want to check out my orthopedic playlist where I review some of the most common orthopedic injuries and procedures. If you find this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video or in my office.